So what exactly are we going to be doing with Mr. Smith today? So today we're going to be doing the CATS Index of Independence and Activities of Daily Living Assessment. Have you ever heard of it before? Um, I've heard a little bit about it, but could you tell me more? Absolutely. So this assessment is for older adults um, just to get a baseline of some different activities of daily living. So like bathing, dressing, remaining continent, feeding, and transferring. Um, and so this assessment is really just to be able to get a baseline and then to further assess them after something like a stroke, such as Mr. Smith. He's recently had this assessment done prior to his stroke, and now we're gonna redo the assessment just to see where he's at in those activities of daily living. Why did you choose to use this assessment for Mr. Smith? So because Mr. Smith had this assessment done prior to the stroke, he's a really, really good candidate to have this assessment done again. Uh, on top of that, it takes very little supplies to do this assessment. It only takes the, the um, handout itself and then a pencil, and it can take as little as five minutes to get this assessment done. Let's head in to see Mr. Smith now. Good morning, Mr. Smith. My name is Mallory. I'm your occupational therapist, and this is Nakia. She's a student that's gonna be working with me today, okay? Um, we're going to do um, an assessment today. It's called the CATS Index of Independence and Activities of Daily Living. You've done this assessment before about two years ago, so we're going to redo it today, okay? So uh, how is the CATS Index scored? If the client is independent while performing the activity, they will receive one point. If the client is dependent when performing the activity, they will receive zero points. A score of six indicates complete independence, four indicates moderate independence, and two or less indicates severe functional impairment. Okay, Mr. Smith. The first thing that we're going to assess is your bathing. So if you wouldn't mind undressing yourself and getting yourself into the shower and showing me what your bathing routine looks like. Um, Mr. Smith, if you if you can't go into the shower and show us your uh, bathing routine, that's totally fine. We'll just move on to the next item. Mr. Smith, I brought you a shirt for you to dress with. We're going to assess your ability to dress yourself independently, okay? Well, Mr. Smith, good job. As you can see that he was able to independently do that, so we're going to award him one point for that section of the assessment. The next thing that we're gonna assess is his ability to feed himself independently. Okay, Mr. Smith. It's a one, he's able to do it independently. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna test is Mr. Smith's ability to remain continent. So we're gonna go for a short walk around the hospital to see if he's able to remain continent the entirety of the time. So after assessing his toileting and transferring ability, Mr. Smith was given a score of four out of six which means that he is considered to be moderately impaired after his stroke. So what functional implications can be made from this assessment? Well, age-related changes and health problems frequently show themselves as decline in the functional status of older adults. So one of the best ways to evaluate health status in older adults is through functional assessment, um, which provides objective data that may indicate further decline or improvement in health status. So like in the case of Mr. Smith, previously he scored a six out of six before his stroke, but now due to the, the decline that he's facing um, after the stroke has occurred, we can look at this and see that these are the two areas that he really needs to focus his therapy on. So this assessment didn't really seem that in depth. Um, mm -hmm. Is it reliable or valid at all? So there aren't any real formal reliability or validity testing, but people still really use this because it consistently demonstrates the utility of evaluating functional status among older adults. Um, but I mean, there are some weaknesses to this assessment. It doesn't go over advance ADLs or um, in a lot of cases, people still have to do further uh, geriatric assessments, but some of the strengths are that it doesn't take very much time to go through this assessment, and it is done in a common language that our, our profession and nursing and doctors can all read this and see exactly what we're seeing and understand the, the results from what we have. Okay, so before we go on to our next client, I want to give you a quick little quiz. So what domains of the OT framework do you think that this evaluation assesses? Um, uh, I think that it probably assesses ADLs, mm -hmm. motor skills, and process skills. That's absolutely correct. The one thing that I think you're missing is the genital urinary and reproduction functions just because of continence, but that was a really good job. Um, so let's move on to our next client.